The news recently carried a story about John Paul II's unprecedented, quote, canonization ceremony and how it will be shot in 3D and seen worldwide. Five million pilgrims are planned to show up at the ceremony itself, and it will be streamed to movie theaters around the world. Here's a news report on it. Millions of people will follow the canonization of John Paul II and John XXIII, and the Vatican's television center will use up to 33 TV cameras and nine satellites to make it happen. The Vatican will team up with other TV companies like Sky, Sony, Globecast, DBW Communication, and Nexo Digital. The level of excitement the world has for John Paul II's quote canonization shouldn't surprise anyone. John Paul II was adored by the world because he was of the world and not of God. John Paul II actually taught that every man is God. John Paul II, homily, April 8, 1987. By his incarnation, the Son of God has united himself in a certain way with each person. John Paul II, homily, July 2, 1986. The Son of God, incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary, has in a certain way united himself with each man. John Paul II, December 25, 1978. I'm addressing this message to every human being, to man in his humanity. Christmas is the feast of man. Since John Paul II taught every man was God and praised false religions created by the devil, he was not a Catholic, and he was outside the church, and he therefore could not have been a true pope. For Pope Leo XIII said, It is absurd to imagine that he who is outside can command in the church. John Paul II was not a pope, but an anti-pope. But John Paul II was much more than an anti-pope. Since he taught that he and everyone else was God, he therefore claimed to be God while sitting in the temple of God. The temple of God is the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica. This fits the definition of the Antichrist, who opposeth and is lifted up above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sitteth in the temple of God showing himself as if he were God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 But John Paul II fits the definition of the Antichrist in more ways than this. John Paul II was also the sixth king of Rome. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he is come, he must remain a short time. Apocalypse 17.9-10 John Paul II was the sixth king of Rome because the Lateran Treaty started a new line of Roman kings who had temporal authority of the Vatican city-state. This new line of kings started with Pope Pius XI. So Pope Pius XI was the first in a new line of Roman kings. Pope Pius XII the second king, Antipope John XXIII the third king, Antipope Paul VI the fourth king, Antipope John Paul I the fifth king, and Antipope John Paul II is the sixth king of Rome. Also, John Paul II's 1981 assassination attempt fulfilled revelation when his death wound was healed. And I saw one of his heads, as it were slain to death, and his death wound was healed, and all of the earth was in admiration after the beast. Apocalypse 13.3 And during the reign of Antipope Benedict XVI, John Paul II's successor, fire came down in the sight of men to increase enthusiasm for John Paul II. And he did great signs, so that he made also fire to come down from heaven unto the earth in the sight of men. Apocalypse 13.13 13. John Paul II was the Antichrist, and his quote beatification ceremony and his upcoming quote canonization ceremony are fulfilling. Apocalypse 13.15 And it was given him to give life to the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should speak, and should cause that whosoever will not adore the image of the beast should be slain. Apocalypse 13.15 So it isn't a surprise that the devil would want the world to see his big moment in 3D. He wants to do everything he can to suck people into the ceremony, venerating the Antichrist. For more information on the Antichrist, the end times, and how the new Antipope Francis fits in, please watch the video, Is the World About to End? The Apocalypse Explained. You can click here to watch that video.